Hi, this is Rachel from the Dotting Center. Today we are going to paint the cover of a fresh new six inch art journal with a rainbow mandala design. Now there are all kinds of studies that show that building a daily habit of art journaling can help artists break through blocks and build some creative muscle. I'm gonna use mine for all kinds of media like pencil drawing, watercolors, acrylics, and markers. So I picked a sturdy mixed media paper that can handle anything I can throw at it. Now the cover is a little basic, so we're gonna remedy that today with a little bit of rainbow magic. For this project, I used the brand new seven piece dotting tool set from the Dotting Center, a chalk pencil, and some stylus tools. I also used my five inch reversible mandala stencil for the guidelines. But if you don't have them, you can always use an 8 or 16 segment divider stencil just to keep your mandala on track. The paints I used are Lumiere metallic paints. All the paint colors are shown here and listed in the description box below. These paints are permanent and even washable on fabric, so they're a great choice for this type of project. And if you don't have these, just check the bottles of your acrylics and make sure they're good on fabric and you should be just fine. So I picked up this cute little watercolor journal at Hobby Lobby. It is a black unfinished fabric canvas cover and I've never painted on fabric before so this is going to be a first. Uh, but it's cute, it's square, and it needs some uh, colors on the front. So today I'm going to show you how to paint a simple mandala using this stencil from my reversible mandala collection. We'll go to the page. Each one comes with a booklet, by the way. And each stencil can be used with itself um, or in conjunction with the other stencils. And you can get, it's like a spirograph for uh, mandalas. It's kind of fantastic and you can use it on flat surfaces or rounded surfaces. Now as you can see it's really easy to find center. You just want to pay attention to the margins around the outside of the stencil to make sure it's centered. Now for the first side what you want to do is draw one line, skip the next, draw one, skip one, and you just want to do that all the way around so that you end up with eight different lines. Each one is separated by an empty space. Then once that's done, this is what you'll have. Then you take your stencil and you flip it over, line up the center registration marks, and then you can see through the template onto the surface which line you start with. And then you do the same thing. You draw one line, skip the next, draw one, skip one, draw one, skip one, all the way around the template until you complete each one of those petal shapes. And then you pull it away and that's what you're left with. Isn't that awesome? Now we're going to start right in the center with the number 12 tool with a big red dot and just fit it right in the center of that flower shape. And now for the very first row we're going to use an orangey copper color using number 4. And you just want to fit that dot in between each of those petals that come and meet up with that center dot. And now using that same tool, let's switch up that orange color. We'll use a slightly different shade of orange using the same tool and just place a dot in between each one of the dots that we just placed. And now using number two, we're going to extend those petals up with that coppery orange color. So each one of those little petals gets two dots. 
Your first dot is going to be larger and the second dot is going to be naturally just smaller because it has less paint on top of the tip. One of the things that I found when painting on this unfinished fabric is that uh, you're used to painting on a very smooth surface. So unfinished canvas doesn't accept the paint as well as a gessoed canvas would. It's very, very different. So what it does, the paint actually soaks into the material more and your edges aren't quite as crisp as they would be on a gessoed canvas or a rock or something flat. So they do actually make clear gesso which I don't have, but it might be something to try if you really enjoy painting on fabric. But I just, I, I'm okay with texture and I'm okay with keeping it unfinished. So I, it didn't really bother me, except when it came to the tiny, teeny, tiny dots. Those do not fall correctly. Um, they just are a little bit too rough. So because of that, I think I just kept the dot size a little bit larger and it really didn't give me too much of a problem. And now here we're following the lines of those petals, making gold petals using a dotting tool and a stylus to drag out each one of those tips. And now see there's a little overlapping shape right here, a little oval, and we're just going to use a stylus tool to make some dots that are larger in the center and extend out and get smaller towards the edge. And now one thing you can do is dry fit your tool first before you apply the paint. Make sure the size is right. This is number 12. We're going to go with a pretty citrine green dot right in the center of those shapes, leaving a little bit of space above and below. And now, just like before, we're going to take our stylus tool and drag that dot out into a teardrop shape, pointing it towards the center of the mandala. Now here you can see I really load up my tool with paint. I hit it a couple of times just to make sure that there's a big pool of paint right there. Also you see there's little bits of little bubbles in this and you don't have to worry about this paint. It is extremely fluid. So as it dries and seeps into the fabric, those bubbles just disappear. And now we're going to take our stylus tool and load it up with some green paint, some darker green paint, and do what my online teacher, Kristen Urig, calls walking the dots. So you load it up, you make your first dot in the center, and then you make progressive dots all the way up each side until the dots get smaller as they go up the sides. And now grab your blue tool, number 10, and we're going to make a halo green gold dot right in the center of each of those outside petals. And now with the stylus tool, we're just going to extend that color up each of the sides of the, the green dots up through um, each of those interior petals. Now we're going to pull out one of the big guns. We're going to get number 12 and go in with this beautiful indigo blue right in between each of the petals and you can dry fit that and you can see how that just fits perfectly. We're just going to make a big blue dot right in between. Now 
Now grab your yellow tool, number six, and we're gonna go in with light blue dots, two at the top and one at the bottom of each of those green dots. And now we'll use a stylus tool with that same paint color and just place three dots right in between the bottom and the two top ones so that you end up having light blue dots surrounding each one of the big green dots. And now with the green tool, number eight, we're gonna do two purple dots on either side of those indigo dots. So the next row is purple. We're just gonna fit them snugly in between where those little spaces are on either side of the indigo dots. And now we're coming in with our purple tool. This is number 11, and we're gonna place burgundy dots in between those two purple dots that we just made. Now we are outside of the boundaries of the stencil, and we are just working with what we already have. This color, by the way, is one that I repurchase. You know how you have those colors that you you find that you can't live without. Some of them will sit on your shelf forever and you'll never touch them. This is one that I've had to buy a couple times and I just love this paint. This color is just incredible to me. I, I like to paint with purple and I don't know why. I don't really, uh, I don't wear purple. I, yeah, it's just a strange thing. I like to paint with it. Do you find that you have a color like that? One that you love to paint with, but you'd never be caught dead wearing it, and you don't have it anywhere in your house, and you just, like, the only time you really enjoy that color is when you're using it with paint. That's, this is, that's my story with purple. I don't know, what's your, what's your color like that? Okay, so now everything is dry, and you can see the quality of the paint. I actually really enjoy seeing the fibers of the canvas coming through that metallic paint. I think that adds a really cool textural quality that it wouldn't come through on a canvas because the canvas is perfectly smoothed with gesso. And I think it just has a neat, a neat texture to it. Now, whenever you see that I pull the paint pool towards the center to, to create a teardrop shape, you can use a stylus tool, you can use the number one tiny tool, you can use anything small that can just drag that paint in the direction that you need it to go. Isn't this paint just delicious? Oh my gosh, working with it is just so fun because you, it's got just the best fluidity and it's not overly metallic. You know, some metallics are just like sparkly and in your face glittery. These are just subtle, subtle bits of metallicness and they just all kind of work together. They flow really well. They're very like earthy colors and oh, just love, love this paint so much. It falls off the tool beautifully. So it's a really great paint for beginners to use. It's not a super puffy paint and it's not meant to be. It's, a, it's meant to be a, a lightweight fluid Ac acrylic it's not a medium body so it's not going to be super puffy but it what it lacks in puff it makes up in color so yeah just awesome paint highly recommend it
So now that it's all completed, I'm going to sign it down at the bottom and there you go. There is your art journal. So cool. The texture is so tactile. You just want to touch it. Oh, and then before we stop, erase all of your chalk lines with a pencil eraser and you're good to go. I am so excited to get started art journaling. Uh, this book now has a cover that can inspire me to tackle all of those blank pages. Oh man, that's a lot. But hey, we can do it. Just 15 minutes every day, right? It's so daunting. But you know what isn't daunting? Hey, if you liked this video, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel because we have way more projects to do. And as always, you can visit me over at thedottingcenter.com for all of your dot art needs. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, bye.